Run. Well, greetings everyone and welcome to a very special edition of On The Run. Yes, I'm right here in lovely Macau. Yes, you can see uh, the City of Dreams behind us, Morpheus over there, the Londoner over there, back in home base uh, in Macau after 84 days abroad and it's great to be back here. And uh, let's get into the news of the week. So we started off with our, um, uh, let me start off with our mad double header. So we did uh, MAD in Manila on Thursday uh, last week, and we did uh, MAD in Macau uh, on Tuesday this week in uh, the Sofitel, and the Manila one was at the Carta Manila. So uh, they're both extremely successful. Thanks very much to our venue sponsors, both of those sponsors, and thank you very much to our platinum sponsor, uh, Light and & Wonder, and our uh, gold sponsor, IGT. Fantastic events, great food, great drinks, great company, and uh, we're looking forward to doing it all over again, hopefully in June, probably three more times this year. Uh, right, let's get into the news from Macau. So first of all, we had almost 2 million arrivals in March, that number came out. So we're running at uh, about 24 million arrivals a year at the moment, which is fantastic compared to 2019. We had 39.4 million, so let's call it 40 million. So we're, uh, what are we up at? 60% of the number of arrivals which is fantastic and it's just getting more and more. We're talking about getting an average of 70,000 per day. So uh, that's fantastic for Macau. And in that vein, 90% uh, occupancy expected for uh, uh, Macau Golden Week. Uh, that's next week. The Macau Travel Industry Council President Andy Wu came out and a few other people have come out and given uh, those numbers, they think the occupancy will be, will be around 90% uh, uh, next week, which is just Absolutely fantastic for Macau after the past three years of the horrible pandemic. Uh, more good news for Macau. 17 restaurants awarded Michelin stars uh, last night, actually, at the, at the event for Michelin stars for Hong Kong and Macau. Uh, all 17 of them are in integrated resorts. And we have uh, two new entries this year, Five Foot Road at MGM Kotai and the uh, Hui Young Garden at the Londoner. So congratulations to MGM. Congratulations to Sands uh, for those two new, two new additions. And if you need an excuse to come to Macau and to eat, well, you don't really need one because we've now got 28 Michelin stars here in Macau. We have three, uh, three Michelin starred restaurants, uh, five, two Michelin starred restaurants, and uh, nine more restaurants with one Michelin star. So get over here and have a feed. Uh, Macau drops mask mandate for public buses. Not that many people are going on public buses who are visiting the IRs, but it's great to see further relaxation of the rules and, uh, and yet another sign that COVID is over. A couple of slightly less positive stories out of Macau. 14 years prison for Tak Chun boss uh, Li Wu Chan. Uh, after what we saw with Sun City, we've now seen uh, a similar sentence, a little bit less, uh, for uh, Tak Chun. And um, yes, that sort of signifies, I guess, the end of the VIP industry in Macau. Although there is some rolling uh, junket play going on, but more akin to the 1990s style of, of junket rather than what we saw with the big rev share rooms and the so-called corporatized junkets. Uh, here's an interesting story that we published this week. Um, the former chairman of South Shore, the, uh, the, the company which had the 13, uh, Peter Coker Jr. Uh, he was known to a lot of people in Macau uh, he, a US court denied him bail, so he was picked up in Thailand for uh, market manipulation and uh, was in a Thai prison. We heard that he uh, lost a lot of weight in the Thai prison and obviously he made a strategic decision to allow himself to be extradited to the US, presumably hoping to make bail, but a US court has said that he's a flight risk and he has the wherewithal to travel internationally. Let's just let that car go past, <laughs> travel internationally, and they've denied him bail. All right, enough from Macau. Let's get over to the Philippines. So um, Padcore News, uh, their Q1 income uh, is out, and their Q1 income from gaming, uh, 303 million US dollars, which is a fantastic result for them, up 49% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. So this signifies the continued uh, growth and development and recovery 
uh, of the Philippines market across all the Philippines. And now that 80 billion peso, which is about one and a half billion uh, US, that asking price for the PADCOR uh, casinos, the 43 casinos currently up for sale, uh, doesn't look as expensive ex as expensive as it once did. In fact, Morgan Stanley did some sums around that and said, well, their pre-COVID revenue was 37 billion US, 20% uh, uh, bottom line margin. That is a multiple of 11 at that asking price. But now with this new revenue number, that asking price is more like a multiple of six or seven or eight or something like that. So maybe it's a little bit more reasonable. Then again, maybe Patcor will put the price up. Who knows? And still about that, uh, that, that story about those 43 casinos currently up for sale uh, by Padcor. Uh, it was uh, Maybank uh, came out and said that they uh, figured that the Clark operators, uh, Han, uh, perhaps Maduri, uh, and Newport World Resorts would be likely bidders for those. So that is interesting if that's in fact what happens. Uh, of the 43 casinos, uh, 14 are in Metro Manila, uh, 16 are in elsewhere in Luzon, eight in Visayas, and five in uh, Mindanao. And of course, that would mean the end of uh, that. Um, uh, that, that dichotomy with Padcor being both a regulator and an operator. So uh, let's see how that plays out. I'm sure there's a lot more news to come on that before that gets finalised. Premium uh, Leisure Corp, their Q1 profit is out, uh, up 48%. Uh, this is a really interesting story because uh, Premium Leisure Corp, part of Bell, uh, Bell Corp, of course, which has the revenue share with uh, with uh, COD Manila. So it's a very good indication as to what the, the COD Manila uh, result could be. And also there's a massive lottery recovery. Premium Leisure Corp, of course, has a big lottery business and uh, that has recovered just as gaming across all the Philippines has recovered. Uh, Aristocrat, our friends over at Aristocrat opened uh, showroom in uh, Manila, a dedicated showroom, which is fantastic. The first dedicated showroom in the Philippines, I believe. Uh, so congratulations to Lloyd Robson and all the team at Aristocrat. Uh, great job uh, by them. And it's good to see that further expansion uh, to the Philippines continuing on. One story out of Singapore, um, Genting, the Genting uh, Q123 estimates from it, I guess it's Maybank, no, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley estimated that uh, their Q1 EBITDA, they increased their estimates and said they're gonna estimate it, it's gonna be 385 million US, that'd be a great result. 91% uh, of the Q119 number, so almost full and complete recovery. Um, and no. <laughs> Apologies, I've made a mistake there. They Genting in Singapore have been estimated at 83% of 2019. In fact, it was Marina Bay Sands that just did their Q1 result of 385 million. That sounds like a better number. Uh, I thought that was high for, uh, for Genting. Uh, and that was 91% of 2019. And in fact, their GGR was 114% of 2019 levels. So Marina Bay Sands, obviously the costs are up a little bit because the GGR is 114%, and, but the bottom line is only 91%. But costs are up all over the world. We all know that. So uh, yeah, Genting Singapore, we await Genting Singapore's results. And uh, Tan Hee Tech, the CEO of uh, Genting Singapore, uh, let's, you know, we're good luck to him. We hope he has a great quarter. Well, that's about it for now. Uh, I will be in Macau for a few weeks. Uh, how, how far did we walk? We walked all the way down to the plaza. Um, we, uh, the Parisian, maybe I'll just wander over here and give you a look at the Parisian. There we go. How about I sign off in this direction? So uh, I'll be in Macau for a while. Uh, Singapore uh, for G2E Asia at the end of the month. Of course, G2E Asia in Singapore, uh, May 30, May 31 and June 1. And don't be confused, there's two G2E Asias this year, one in Singapore and also the one in Macau, July 11, July 12, July 13. Uh, Inside Asian Gaming uh, is lead media uh, and production partner for those and we're completely running the, the conference at both events as well. So we hope to see you there. So that's it from, here, from me here in Macau. I'll still be in Macau next week and the week after. So I be, won't be uh, on the run uh, for the next few weeks. So I'll be off the run, but then the run will begin after, shortly after that. So have a great weekend. See you in Macau next week and bye for now. See ya. Run.